One of my favorite things about Inkscape is that it has tools that let you make pretty complicated designs very, very easily. Today in this tutorial, I wanna show you how you can make these color gradient designs. It's gonna be so simple, but we'll take a source photo and using just a couple tools, you can set it up so you can then create, look at that, a gradient that's pretty dynamic and you can use this for backdrops, backgrounds, video game design, anything you want, and you'll be surprised how easy it is to do with Inkscape. And this is Inkscape 1.2. It'll also work in previous versions, but if you're using 1.2, you can follow along exactly like this. So let's do it. This first image we'll use is from Pexels.com. I do try to source the photographer, but there wasn't one listed. So if you took this photo, thank you. It's gonna be perfect for this example. All you need to do is study the image and think about what you want to extract as that gradient. I'm gonna go right down the center here where the sun is because I'm trying to hit as many different color variations as possible. Grab the rectangles tool and make a rectangle. I'm doing it wide right now so you can see it. If you're new to Inkscape, you wanna hit the object fill and stroke menu. We don't want to stroke for this, so on the stroke tab, X out of it. On the fill tab, I'm using green. It doesn't matter. You can do any color you want. That's all we need for the menu. Now let's make this very, very thin. If you hit back on the Create Squares and Rectangles tool, you'll see up in the modification area, it gives you a chance to enter manually the width, the height. I'm set to millimeters. You can do it in inches, pixels, anything. We'll stay on millimeters. Let's go to 0.50 millimeters, and you see a very, very, very thin slice here. Go back to Selector Tool, and this is where you want to move it to the spot of the image that you want to capture. I'll go right through the center of the sun. I've got the thin line selected. Hold Shift and choose the image. Go up to Object, Clip, Set. And there you go, a thin, thin, thin line that looks like nothing until you hit it one more time with the selector tool. You see these little arrows here? Draw it out to the left, I'll show you why in a second. You create your gradient. And zoom in, look at this, look how rich the color variations are. And they always say if you're looking to make a palette to look towards nature to find colors that go well with each other, look at that, you can go as detailed as possible. There is a fine tune touch you can do with the object selected. Go up to extensions, raster, and there's a selection called Sharpen. This is all preference if you wanna do this, but if you wanna make these even tighter, if I zoom in, I'm on Radius 1.0, Sigma 0.5 Live Preview. I don't know if the screen capture picked up any difference there for you, but it is happening. So you can play with these features if you wanna have even harder delineation. I'll hit Apply and Close. Let's do another one. Okay, how to mask the part you like best. So this was the example I wanna show you, the same type of thing. Let's get our rectangle tool. I'll make my line. On this one, I won't put it right in the center of the sun because I don't wanna have that thick, thick beam. I want a thinner beam of the sun. Go back up to, with the object selected, up to my modification area. We'll go to 0 0.50 for the millimeters. Why am I doing 0 0.50? Because I've played around with this and I want the thinnest slice possible that's still convenient and easy to do. Try thicker yourself and see how it changes the gradient. I'm gonna move it so I get a piece of the sun, a piece of the cloud, and I don't wanna hit this entire thing down here. The sliver is selected, hold shift, get your image, object, clip, set. Remember I mentioned don't pull it to the right. For some reason, if you pull it to the right, it worked that time. I've had issues when I was practicing this, pulling to the right for some reason was making the whole thing vanish. Do control Z, pull it to the left. Let me know in the comments, does it work for you either way? Look at that. This looks like almost exactly like a scarf my wife has. And so maybe, maybe the designers played off of an image like that to get the palette. But here's what the exercise is. If you have, let's say you really like this part here, and you're gonna use this as a pattern or a background, but you don't want all the darkness down there. Very simple, grab the rectangles tool again, go over the part that you wanna take, and let's go back to the fill and stroke menu so we can make this see-through for now. To do the mask properly, you wanna be all white for the fill. For now, I'll take opacity down, and we'll move it to the portion that we think we need for whatever imaginary project we're doing. Let's say we wanna have a line of blue, all this action, and it's just a touch of the darkness at the bottom. Go back to full opacity. You've got your masking box. Hold shift, get the image, object, mask, set. And there you go. You've got your new color swatch gradient art, and you can modify it as you please now. 
Again, if you want to do that sharpen step, it's up in extensions raster because we're actually working off of a raster photograph and go down to sharpen. We'll skip it for now. If you like that original example, I thought I'd throw it in here as well. This was my favorite of all the ones I played with. For this, I want to capture all of this extra detail here and all this extra detail here. So I'll go down almost in the center of the sun. Got my sliver selected, shift, get the image, object, clip, set. And take a look. I just think that's very easy to do for something that has a lot of applications you can use outside of Inkscape. So I do have a question for you. This is a pretty quick tutorial. Do you have a preference? Because I threw this one on a black border and I named it Tail Light Sunset Gradient. <laughs> so do you like it on a white border or a black border? I just was uh, curious what you thought on that. And the last thing I'll say before we say goodbye is if you go to export this, when you go to file export to take it outside and use it somewhere, if it looks like this, just gray, it means it's way too big. So for all of these images, before you bring them in, like for example, let's bring in one more just to show you. This is some ice that I actually changed the file size to about five megabytes outside of Inkscape before bringing it in. The project will work just as well on this as it would on the full size image, which is this one. But you see the difference? This is a giant file. And for some reason, when you do this exercise, first couple times I tried it, I went to export it and it was coming out gray. All you have to do is change the source image size and it'll work you know what while we're here why don't we try this ice image i'll take the sliver the image object clip set see what we got this could be actually nice for a backdrop of something where you're laying text over it or whatever you can dream up so let's call it a day there and i really do appreciate all of the comments and let me know if you like that white background black background and do you have any requests for future tutorials. I'm enjoying Inkscape 1.2. We might revisit some older stuff and thanks.